thank you everybody for taking the time. Um, welcome to the sixth annual Innovation for International Development Exposition hosted by the Shah Family Global Innovation Lab. Each year, the Office of Global Engineering Programs and Partnerships hosts this event to provide a forum for professionals, students, and faculty to share their experience and findings and learn from one another. This year, the Expo is playing a critical role in helping the Purdue community to remain connected to the development challenges we are all working to address. This event has been particularly valuable to Purdue faculty and students who, despite this year's challenges, have continued their research and seek to ensure it is aligned with needs in the field while maintaining leadership in innovation. This year's Expo included topical panels offering our students insight into career opportunities, as well as discussions by practitioners on methods and lessons learned that we can incorporate into our work. We hosted a variety of guests from academia, private sector, and foreign assistance agencies. I want to thank our panelists for taking the time to share your knowledge, experience, and advice. I will also like to thank the Graduate Researchers for International Development, GRID, a student group that was responsible for arranging the Purdue alumni and career panels. We're grateful for their support and collaboration as the students plays a critical role in this work and represent Purdue's and representing Purdue once they enter the workforce. I also want to thank our Expo supporters and partners, the Office of Professional Practice, the Burton Morgan Center, Honors College, Purdue Foundry, Laser Pulse, and the Center for Career Opportunities. In addition to the great programming events we had, this week played a critical role in allowing to select and announce Shaw Family Global Innovation Lab C grant winners. The Shaw Family Global Innovation Lab was founded to convene and catalyze consortia in international development, matching world-class capabilities with the most pressing global challenges. Since 2015, the lab has provided over half a million dollars in seeding 26 projects that have gone on and secured more than 4.8 million additional funding. The Shah Lab grant process begins by contacting our implementation partners in the field who identify problems, work with our faculty to explain the challenges, and then collaboratively develop a project proposal to address these challenges. This year also marked the first time we had domestic focused programs statements from the Bronx Community Health Network. We hope to continue collecting problem statements from both domestic and international communities and partners in future funding cycles. This year, we had 11 implementing partners from nine countries, identifying 20 problems in every sector and worked with 44 Purdue researchers that resulted in nine submitted proposals. This week, we heard from five semifinalist teams made up of Purdue faculty and researchers and implementing partners. Although they did not need to have to give presentations, there were three semifinalists in, in the running for design and travel grant funding. Thank you to our implementing partners who made time over these past few months to work with our faculty help them understand the challenges you face in, in the communities you work in and what solutions are worthy of research consideration. We value your partnership and could not pursue these research efforts without each of you. The Shah Lab C grant funding would not be complete without the collaboration and support of Purdue's Office of International Programs in Agriculture led by Dr. Jerry Shively. He has made it possible for us to support cross-sector, multi-sector projects and helped us increase the number of projects we can support. The agriculture engineering collaboration is often key to overcoming 
the challenges our partners present. Um, at this time, um, I would like to ask Ning Chang to say a few words and introduce our benefactor, Manu Shah. Well, thank you very much, George. Uh, mic check first. It's working. Well, thank you so much uh, for your leadership, your team's outstanding work and contribution, especially during such a challenging year for uh, engineering global programs. And indeed, there are at least two major tracks uh, in my mind of uh, global engineering. One is student mobility, uh, including student pipeline into graduate program, undergrad program, and all kinds of exchange, joint and dual degree program. And the other track is the subject matter of today's I2D Expo, the sixth year in uh, the running and an incredibly important part of what we do here at Purdue University, and that is on international development. And there are many ways to engage engineering innovation with international development. A lot of those involve our outstanding faculty, students, alumni. And from December 2019, onward for one year exactly, I was away in Washington DC participating in the launch of tech diplomacy for the United States government in partnership with many like-minded nations. And I saw firsthand how the diplomats and USAID mission colleagues along with our partnering countries have been able to make a huge difference in the lives of so many around the world. And when it comes to developing countries or low and middle income countries, uh, there is a lot that can be done and a critical role that the Shah Family Lab aims to fulfill. Uh, I'm proud to see that the Shah Family Lab supports so many faculty and students by providing connectivity to key stakeholders and to potential donors for designing, implementing, testing, scaling up the solutions for communities in developing world. Uh, and it's our utmost and sincere hope that the Shaf Family Lab will continue to scale, produce engineering innovation to build resilient, self-reliant uh, societies and to enable vulnerable populations to be able to uh, innovate for themselves. And before we have the chance to announce the seed grant awardees for 2021, uh, I want to again thank everyone who has through this very challenging year for any global engagement, whether it is student mobility or international development, to continue with great creativity and persistence uh, to push the envelope of this most meaningful set of endeavors for uh, not only uh, our country, but uh, indeed throughout the world. And now it is my great honor uh, to uh, introduce to all of you, although uh, I would assume most of you have already met in person or virtually with Manu Shah. And Manu, great to see you again. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Uh, I wish that we could uh, have received and hosted you and your family here in West Lafayette. I hope that day won't be too far away uh, as we continue to turn the corner uh, in this country and soon around the world of the pandemic. But Mr. Manu Shah, uh, uh, still I will very much hope to summarize uh, his very impressive bio uh, and then introduce him to the virtual stage here. He received a master's degree in mechanical engineering from Purdue and prior to that a BS in mechanical engineering from University of Bombay. And he's the recipient of many awards in recognition of his success as an entrepreneur, as a business innovator, and as a leader. He is the CEO of the leading importer and distributor of premium surfaces and natural stone products, the MS International Incorporated. And I have had the pleasure about uh, uh, Manu, would you say it's about two and a half years ago to visit you and your very impressive company. Thank you for the tour that I remember very well. Uh, Manu and his wife, Rika, founded the company as a side project 
when he worked as an engineer for International Harvester. And since then, it has grown to a billion dollar company with a global impact, importing products from about 35 countries around the world and operating in over 40 major metropolitan areas in the United States. And I heard now is providing in uh, excess of 180,000 jobs globally and truly bringing jobs, income, and dignity to so many around the world. The impact is important to the Shah family who believe in making a difference, uh, including back here at his alma mater, Purdue. Given their intimate knowledge of Purdue, we are so grateful to the Shah family for identifying the important role that a place like Purdue can play in promoting economic growth and prosperity overseas. And with that, let me bring to the virtual stage my dear friend and a great water maker, Manu Shah. Good morning, Ding Mang and all of you at Salem ITU, ITU Expo. <clears throat> I hope all of you and your family members are safe from COVID-19. 54, 54 years ago, I was one of you, a boiler maker, a newly minted graduate from Purdue, determined to make a significant dent in the world with my engineering prowess. As your fellow boiler makers speaking with you today and making this keynote address is truly a humbling experience. <clears throat> I thank Purdue for giving me this opportunity. Purdue changed my life. Hardly speaking English. Completed MSME in 11 and a half months with three job options waiting to learn in and from America. For a kid born in struggling lower middle class, ninth of nine children, 400 miles north of Bombay in very small town with no running water, no electricity, and moved to Mumbai at age six. And then at 22, I was at Purdue. That one year at Purdue was a year of transformation for me. Our life has been a terrific journey, rugged and spectacular, lonely at that time, curious vans with twists and turns, hiccups and bumps, never bored, always full of fun. When I was 13 years old in 1958, an event changed my life forever. India was running out of food under PL 480. America was donating surplus grains and dairy products. A lot of that grain came from Indiana. I was waiting in line for hours to get subsidized red wheat and non fed milk. Without the help from America, I don't know where lower middle class in a big city would be. Rika, my wife sitting here, put her share of time in lines for vegetable oil and kerosene. My school of 2000 student was given rupees 2000 as a grant from someone unknown in America to start a science club. That is a one quarter dollar per student. Our science teacher decided to make a club for only 10th and 11th grade. I was entering ninth grade and heard the news. I begged the teacher repeatedly to let me join. After submitting a working telegraph, he took me as the youngest student that changed my interest in education, innovation, and technology from nothing to something. So did my desire to study more about America and ways to come to the land of opportunity. 
after graduating at Purdue, joined a small company in Cleveland with the engineering department of five, making truck mounted cranes. Other job offers from IBM and FMC Corporation, where I would have been one of thousands of engineers. I enjoyed what I did in Cleveland and then moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana to join International Harvester. As a mechanical engineer, I've been trained to plan everything, no matter how small or large project. And I suggest to all of you, be ready for mid-course correction as projects get rolled out. But I learned something else. This is an appeal to all of you who are young and bright engineers, full of energy. When nothing seems impossible from where you start today, especially with the backing of Purdue, I'm challenging each one of you to a challenge to accept it. How do you become an entrepreneur from being engineer in the next phase of your life? Become entrepreneur from engineer. I had this very question when I graduated in 1968 from Purdue and set out searching for answers and eventually creating MS International Incorporated. Although I'm taking credit for everything, my wife actually started the business 46 years ago when I was a senior project engineer at International, then International Harvester. She was looking for a way to keep her occupied while bringing up our two boys. Over the years, she has continued to guide and help MSI and make me through our strategic journey. She caringly supported all our ventures and smilingly challenged every initiative. Remember, all of you remember, there's a two win ways to win a race. Be better than everyone else. Faster, stronger, or choose weaker opponent. You may have better chance of finding weaker opponent in all non glumerous businesses. And that's what we choose. We went into a stone business at there hardly let anybody graduate working a master's from Purdue. There was no competition. Natural stone has been around for thousands of years and there was no risk that the industry will go away. Natural stone, millions of years in the making was the world's first product to cultivate entrepreneurship from originally being used as a knife to helping discover fire, to making the first will, to being used as a shelter in chaos, assisting in agriculture, first currency of entrepreneurship, a stone coin, a medium for the writing, carving, and finally as a building block for pyramids, coliseum, churches, and temples. Natural stone has stood the test of time over millions of years and remains the best friend to the mankind. Today, natural stone is the most visible part of every home. From entryway to kitchen counter, master bath, top surrounds, fireplace, columns, patio, and landscaping. High prices at the time, Natural Stone was selling at very high prices and only top tier homes in the USA. It was my belief that through the volume, Natural Stone can become accessible to homeowners to beautify their home. Today, Natural Stone or similar look has become a standard commodity in every home. It was due to these traits that after completion of the Vietnam Memorial, I decided to quit my job. And I, in fact, I made the conscious decision of not opening high-tech personal computer franchise 
but rather follow through in stone industry. My wife believed that we could bring many high-tech tools in the stone industry and effectively bring, bring it out to, from North Core industry to the building and industry, con, to the building and concern, construction. construction industry. <clears throat> As a compulsory, a compulsive entrepreneur, let me cut right to the chase and share you the four key ingredients what makes individual a successful entrepreneur. The world is, first is adaptability, which I learned from stone, how man adapted eight million years ago, use of stone, that's how human, a, living creature become a human and today is they're ruling the world. The world is changing at extremely fast rate, not just in technology, but in other aspects as well. For instance, last year we were hit with COVID-19 and the pandemic affected roughly every company in one way or the other. I'm happy to share with our adaptability my company grew in 2020, 30%, and we are growing at 40% rate. From billion dollar company, only four years ago, we'll cross $2.2 billion, $2 billion in revenue this year. Okay. Our two sons are running the company. They are co-presidents. They have been trained as a part of entrepreneurship from me and my wife, it runs in our every drop of blood. Second suggestion is never take no for an answer. I want all of you to embrace this mentality of not giving up when you are have set up to achieve an objective or a goal. During the financial crisis of 2007 and 8, with the housing bubble burst, directly affecting our company and our industry, we had two options. The first option was to reduce our size, raise our hands, as many did during their time. The second option was to fight against all odds and eventually growing nearly 10 times and not firing a single employee at any time due to lack of work. Five recession we have gone through in 45 years, we have never let go a single employee. Okay. Today, after 45 years, we have grown organically. And with 40 plus branches in US and Canada, we work hard, but we embrace smartness. Third part, that's very important. Avoid doing 80% of what others do. Avoid doing 80% of what others do. Learn the 20% and try to improve on that 20% from wherever you learn, become even better than them. Okay. And this is a very important part. We spend every week, every month, in our strategy session, how we will not do what others are doing. We will do what shoots towards our goal, not because others are doing it. We today, we MSI use cutting edge technology such as AI, augmented reality, computer vision, and many such technology where the store or the home, home improvement industry was slow to adopt new technology. We are, our, our productivity of our people is twice as much as almost all our competitors. Okay. So this is where we should go and infuse technology, which will give you the edge. The fourth one is 
people often ask, would you rather be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond? We choose neither of these two options. We would rather be small fish in a small pond, even though today we are a $2 billion company. Most people don't realize what we are. We are still Indiana-based company. We have a branch in Indianapolis. Okay. So stay out of everybody else's sites where and stay in a stealth mode where predators are roam, scourging every smaller organism their way. You will stay away from. So in summary, my fellow mechanical engineers, become entrepreneur, adaptable, never take no as answer, find solutions, make mid-course correction, remain undetected. And let me tell you, there is no such thing as success. Only embrace fun and long journey. Wish you all the best in your future adventures. Good luck to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manu and Rika, uh, for joining us and sharing your experience, advice, and encouragement. The Shah family is leading the effort to enable produce talented faculty and students to engage in the global community and impact people's lives. Your generosity continues to make an impact. Now I would like to turn it over to Diana Harbison to announce this year's C Grant winners. Thank you, George, and thank you, Rika and Manu, for such sage advice. It's my pleasure to introduce the winners of the Shaw Family Innovation Lab funding for this year. As a reminder, we have two categories of funding, design grant and seed grant. They were evaluated along the same parameters, including collaborative approach with local partners, potential for impact, gender and equity, scalability, intellectual merit, and risk. I will start first with the design grant funding winners in no particular order. Low cost lighting for girls to read in Senegal. Plan International, a girls rights organization, helps 600 adolescent girls co-design educational programming. COVID-19 sent the girls home where they faced intermittent electricity impeding their access to digital education platforms and light building on a shared commitment to student-led learning, Purdue Faculty and Plan International will create curriculum that allows the girls to develop their own low-cost solar charger so they can continue their studies. Our next design grant winner, Sesame Seed Harvesting in South Sudan. IED Agricultural Cooperative Society is a farming co-op of 30 farmers and seeks to leverage the fertile land in South Sudan to grow sesame seeds produce sesame oil, and revitalize the economic status of the region. Working with Purdue, AACS will provide farmers a way to extract sesame oil for consumption, provide technical expertise for best farming practices, and identify ways to reduce food losses. Our last design grant winner is low-cost maintenance seed drill technology in India with Catholic Relief Services. CRS is a humanitarian aid organization and a notable institutional partner for Purdue. Small farmers make up 86% of the 66 million families in self-employed agriculture. CRS determined that current seed drills are unfit for small farmers due to high cost and maintenance. Purdue and CRS will co-create an affordable, scalable technology to increase crop yield and reduce cumbersome agricultural processes for small farmers. On to the seed grant winners. I want to thank Dr. Jerry Shively and IPIA and the College of Agriculture for being a partner on all of these, all of these awards. He's demonstrated how much can be gained when Purdue works together on shared interests in international development. Thank you again, Dr. Shively. The seed grant winners in no particular order are managing the impact of fall armyworms in, on agricultural production in South Sudan. 
World Concern, a global relief and development organization, identified that a lack of policy and importation of pesticides makes it difficult for farmers to manage pests affecting their crops. Purdue and World Concern will conduct research on educational materials that promote the use of herbal solutions so they can demonstrate empirically the efficacy of the solution to manage fall army worms. Our next seed grant winner is low cost solar water defluoridation system in India. The Self-Employed Women's Association, SEWA, is a member-based organization of 1.6 million women workers. High fluoride and saline levels in water resources affect the health and lives of SEWA members. Purdue and SEWA will work to create a low-cost defluoridation pumping system that will resolve this problem and provide work and income for SEWA members to build self-reliance to help them exit poverty cycles. Our last seed grant winner, addressing the overuse of hospital services. At the direction and request of Bronx Community Health Network, Empress Mobile Integrated Health has teamed with Purdue faculty to proactively identify and manage conditions at home for patients. Individuals with chronic illness struggle to understand and navigate the healthcare system. Patient volume in the Bronx has also created unique access issues. Purdue and Empress will develop a solution that provides early intervention and additional support to improve overall quality of care for patients at the right place and the right time. Congratulations to all the winners. Thank you to the Shaw family for making this work possible. Thank you so much again for joining us this morning for you this afternoon for us. Rhonda Hahn and I will be in touch with all of the Shaw Grant winners uh, with the next steps. Thank you to all of our field partners for submitting problem statements and to all the Purdue faculty for responding to these calls. I will turn things back over to George. Thank you, Diana. Congratulations to all the C Grant winners. Before we close, I want to again thank Dean Chang, Rika and Manu, Shah for joining us today and sharing us with their insight and advice. I also want to thank the Purdue Hall of Music, the GRID Student Group, and the team members of the Global Engineering Programs and Partnerships Office for their support, for their effort in supporting this event. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge our undergraduate students, Matthew and Sophia, and of course, Pallavi Gupta, who has certainly left her marks on the Shah Lab in the past two years. Wish her all the best directing the Laser Pulse program. Lastly, but certainly not least, I want to thank Rhonda Hahn, Tammy Sells, and Diana Harbison for doing all the heavy lifting and delivering on this year's event. Thank you everyone for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in person in 2022. And a happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Thank you very much, and have a good weekend. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.